In this video, we're going to look at the concept of heats of reaction. So heat of a reaction is the value of heat that is transferred during a reaction. And it gets the symbol Q. So when you see Q, that's a heat. And it's going to have units of either joules or kilojoules. Normally, we work in joules, but in some cases, you might see a heat as um, having units of kilojoules. What we're basically talking about is when a reaction takes place, um, a thermochemical reaction will either release energy or it will absorb energy. And um, if it releases energy, it's going to feel hot because you're going to feel that uh, increase in temperature uh, as the energy comes out. If it absorbs energy, it's going to feel cold, meaning that um, it's taking energy from the surroundings and it's going to make things feel cold. So we have to define this directionality in terms of if we wanted to find um, if we wanted to find directionality, we have to define s sort of where heat is coming from and where heat is going. So there are a couple of terms that we can add when we talk about a heat of reaction. So the first one is what is a system? What is the surroundings? And what is heat? So the system is basically the substance or substances that you're that you're looking at. So this is your this is your reaction, and it's basically the substances under examination. So this would be what's inside your test tube. It could be what's inside your round bottom flask. The, the idea is it's it's the it's the thing at which that the thing at which you're looking at, and you want to compare the energy of the products in the reactants. So that's that's the idea with what the system is, and the surrounding is basically everything else. So this could be the test tube. This could be the bench top that it sits on. It can be the air that's around the reaction. It can be you, the, the person running the reaction, are part of the surroundings. It's essentially the entire universe of stuff that's not the system. So that's the system and the surroundings. Now, with heat, we kind of have an idea of what heat is. Heat is the energy that flows into or out of a system. And it's represented by a difference in temperature. If you remember, the temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy of a system, right? So when we learned in what we learned at the end of chapter five was that temperature is proportional to the motion of the molecules. So basically what happens is when a system gives off energy, it transfers those energies to the molecules in the surroundings. And it's going to make those molecules move faster. That's the manifestation of that energy transfer. If the molecules move faster, then they're going to have a higher temperature. They're going to have a higher average kinetic energy or temperature. So whenever you create a gradient in the average kinetic energy between your system and your surroundings, that gradient is going to manifest as a temperature change. Heat tends to flow from areas of high temperature to low temperature. So when something gets hot, it's going to feel hot because temperature is being the heat energy is being transferred or radiated away from that. And when something feels cold, um, that means that energy is being given to it. So in general, we can kind of define this idea of hot and cold. So hot is something that gives off energy. Or releasing heat and something that's cold is absorbing heat. So that just gives you a sense for what the physical manifestations of these energy transfers are. So now what we can do is we can look at the two possibilities for a reaction. So Q can either be positive or Q can be negative. So in the case that Q is positive, heat is absorbed. And so what we have is we have our system and we have our surroundings and heat is coming from the surroundings to the system. So that's our heat flow. And in this case, Q is going to equal a positive value because the system is gaining energy. The sample is going to feel cold. And this is what we call endothermic. In the next section, we're going to talk about what delta H is, but 
in the case where we have an enthalpy change, and we're going to talk about what enthalpy is, and we're going to talk about enthalpy in terms of enthalpy diagrams, but we can introduce this idea of enthalpy. Enthalpy is when you have a heat transfer, it, it just so happens that the heat transfer is under constant pressure. So in this case, our delta H, which is our enthalpy change, is going to be a positive. So heat's flowing into the system, and if it's at a constant pressure, then our delta H is going to be positive. Okay, so now if we have the other case, Q is minus, heat is being released. In this case, the system is going to give off energy to the surroundings. That's going to be our heat flow. So Q is going to equal a negative. If this is taking place at a constant pressure, delta H is going to be negative. This is going to feel hot, and this is what we call exothermic. So exo meaning it's coming out, and endo meaning it's coming in. So when we, you have a heat of a reaction, these are the two possibilities. So a reaction can either absorb energy and it's endothermic or it can release energy and it's exothermic. And this, is, this change or this transfer of energy is relative to the system and the surroundings. So that gives you a sense for uh, this idea of heats of reaction, where things are going. Now in the next video, we're gonna introduce enthalpy. And this is the exact same concept. It's just that we're gonna sort of really look at this idea of this heat transfer, but now in terms of the reaction itself and in terms of the relative energies of the reactants and products.